Tony Poulos here at 5G Asia in Singapore. Today I have with me Dahanje Pavhi, who is the competency head of network services at Tech Mahendra. Dahanji, good to catch up with you. Tell me firstly about your title. I have to ask about what is a competency head? Okay, good question and thanks for that, uh, Tony. Essentially, as an organization, we have taken a deliberate step to invest into the upcoming trends, if you like, technology trends, so that we are geared up to cater to the uh, challenges that our key customers, which are communication service providers, are facing in terms of ensuring A, they protect their revenue, and B, they drive their revenue growth. That's a tough one. Now, where are they heading in order to protect those revenues? How are they going to stay in business in the future? Okay. So, Tony, we believe that uh, unfortunately or fortunately, CSPs are standing at a juncture wherein they are striving for their survival. And numbers speak for themselves. If we look at number of IoT devices that are going to reach by 2020, we are talking about 50 billion, 5 zero, 50 billion IoT devices. And let's further delve into the numbers, right? Today, we are standing at total active connections across the globe at about 5 billion, right, circa. And we have a world population of about 7 billion circa. So we are talking about 10 folds growth in the network devices that communication service providers need to cater to. And in terms of percentage, which is 1000 percentage, so it's mind boggling and phenomenal. So it's just not possible for a communication service provider to cater to such a tsunami kind of growth, if you would like, in the network devices that they, A, you know, they need to sell services on and B, operate on. So as a, as a focused consulting firm and systems integrator, you do a bit of everything. How do you go about telling service providers where they should be going? Will they listen to you? Well, uh, good question. Whether they would listen to us or not, I think they have no choice. Uh, that's uh, the reality, right? Uh, when it comes to, uh, let me take a step back. When we were talking about uh, the numbers, right? So there are three key drivers, we believe, that are shaping up the industry and challenging the industry, pushing them hard against the wall, if you would like. A, the video consumption, right? Uh, the data tsunami has already happened and we have seen the growth in data versus the dip in revenue. So they are not proportional, right? The, the rift is widening, right, if you would like. So that's A. B, uh, the number of connected devices, which we already uh, touched upon. And C, the 5G. Uh, while 5G is emerging, but uh, it's going to be, you know, before we blink our eye and 4G matures, 5G is going to be here. So these are the three trends which we believe is pushing industry hard. Now in terms of what Tech Mahindra is doing to cater to these challenges, we have taken four solution bets, right? A, first and foremost, driving the experience, customer experience. And we are calling it as a digital experience. And so many thoughts uh, and thoughts and talks are done about customer experience, but we believe that when it comes to customer experience, that has to span across A, physical experience, B, the digital experience, and C, platform-enabled uh, aspect of that experience. So we have done uh, cautious investments in terms of acquiring few organizations, like Pen & Ferina in Europe, uh, if you have heard about it. So they are absolutely marvel when it comes to doing the physical design and the design-led approach, right, design thinking approach. So that's one. And which is helping our communication service provider industry as well. Now, someone may think Pin and Ferina, which is quite thick into atom oil industry, what are they doing in uh, this industry, right? But we are bringing in that expertise to the table to help our customers. B, uh, when it comes to digital experience, right? We have done, done yet another acquisition, right? Bio, which is helping us to do the digital experience. And to wrap it up, we have our own platforms, which are actually bringing the right ingredients from likes of Pin and Ferina Digital and our own, uh, you know, in-house algorithms, if you would like, to bring that right experience to the customer. You touched on the, that network evolution, though. We're going from 4G to 5G. We're not really sure what 5G is going to end up being just now, but what are the networks of the future going to look like? How, how will we progress past 5G? Do you have any idea what it will be? Where it is going to heading to, honest answer is I do not know. Uh, 
really because if we look at the time it took uh, to achieve the critical mass in terms of subscriber growth let's look at numbers again right 2G took like 7 years to reach 150 million subscribers right 3G took uh, let's say 5 years and 4G adoption as we know has happened in about 2.5 to 3 years speeding up it's speeding up and it's crazy the speeds are crazy so where 5G would go the only thing that I know for sure is 5G is definitely not going to be only about speed. It is not only about achieving the great uh, data rate and throughput. Of course, that is needed with the uh, advent of uh, 4K videos and AR, VR. Yes, that is needed, but that is not the only thing. And the reason being, the communication service provider has to have, has to be equipped, if you would like, with an ability to slice their network, to cater to various demands of bandwidth on the services that they are providing. For instance, when we talk about the smart metering solution, it hardly needs a byte of you know, bandwidth. Yeah, very small. All the way up to AR, VR, which needs... Human or, or the connected car, which is talking about gigabytes of data every minute or so. Going Absolutely. Down. Look, the, you, when you talk about, uh, when you're talking to telcos at the moment, they're really worried about revenue growth. The service providers are concerned about revenue growth. It's okay helping them uh, get their network sorted out, their infrastructure sorted out, but how can you help them to generate more revenue? And so what we have done is in terms of our four bets, we covered one bet. We have placed two other bets in terms of uh, software centricity because we believe that all enterprises today are becoming software centric, right? And communication service provider is no exception to that. So when we come to that, we are talking about microservices, we are talking about platforms, we are talking about industry accelerators, right? When it comes to network of future in particular, right? When it comes to revenue growth, we have cautiously uh, invested to have a rounded solution across the core network. You take uh, virtual IMS, virtual EPC, uh, and so on and so forth. You take access, which is virtual RAN. Yes. Now RANs are getting virtualized, yes. and which is importantly so when it comes to 5G. Exactly. Right? Because unless your RAN is virtualized, you can't really no, take slice. advantage of it. Yeah, no. absolutely. So and then the edge as well, I presume. And the edge as well, you're right. So we have enterprise specific offerings. And to top it up, I think we are missing the most important factor, which is hyper automation. And agility is the name of the game, Tony, really. Because if you have your networks which are beautifully, you know, software centric and software designed, if you don't have the solution which would take that uh, network in a form of a service to a customer in days and not months and years. So when it comes to hyper automation needs, right, we believe that and I'm deliberately using the word hyper automation because automation is done and dusted, right? The primitive automation is done everywhere. Uh, you take any industry, right? Uh, when we talk about hyper automation, we are essentially talking about an ability to do the close control loop in the network especially from operations perspective, right? Or an ability to do in-flight changes when the service is on, right? That's the key. So to that effect, while the standards themselves are evolving and yet to mature, we believe that the crowdsourcing or the collaborative approach is the most efficient and the important approach. To that effect, we have invested in uh, Linux Foundation's own app, which is Open Network Automation Platform, and we are a platinum member of that. So we have topped uh, ONAP's offerings with our own machine learning algorithms to drive, to drive predictive analytics, for example. We have our own IoT platform, uh, which helps drive uh, the revenue growth for uh, communication service provider. And we have implemented that for a large mobile operator in India. Well, you're heading in the right direction and you'll be a good partner, I'm sure, for most of the service providers who are grappling at the moment with all those challenges. Dehanjay, thank you very much for being with me. Thank you, Tony.